Hey guys, welcome to the next video. So in the previous two, we saw we talked about ether synthesis and cleavage. So now we're going to cover what an epoxide is, right? So epoxides are a type of ether. So just in case you again forget, this is what an ether looks like. Okay, so that's an ether. We have our two R groups. They could be the same or different. Now an epoxide is going to look very similar. is is a type of ether, but it looks a little bit different. All right. So let's say. I gave this sort of carbon chain, right? That's a type of ether. Let's actually make it a little better. So if I say, let's say, I have this one, right? So that's an ether. Now, an epoxide is going to look something like this. You can see it's this oxygen and a three-membered ring. It's still connected to two R groups. We have these two carbons on that one. We have another one and another one right there. So we still have our two R groups. And just like with epoxy, they could be the same or they could be different. So if we look at this open chain ether, we can, let's say, that sort of an ether. We also have the same thing with epoxides. All right. So how exactly do we make an epoxide? Well, there are a couple ways. So let's see this. First, um, one of the reagents you guys will learn is called MCPBA. Okay. MCPBA. And so if you're wondering what this looks like, and they could show you the structure perhaps, so maybe it's a good idea to know what um, these reagents are. It's gonna look something like this. All right, so it's a carboxylic acid, right? But instead of an H here, so instead of having this, right, we have another OH group. And so MCPBA specifically, right, is going to look like this. All right, and that's MCPBA. So another way you could actually see this written, instead of MCPBA or the structure, they could write RCO3H. Here's the carbon. Here's one oxygen, two Three. Here's the H they're talking about, and that's the R group. All right, so definitely know that RCO3H is uh, another way of saying MCPBA. Okay. So let's see an example of how this works. So MCPBA, right, and, or any of these reagents that create epoxides have to work on double bonds. Okay. So let's see this right here. So I'm going to draw a ring. Here's a double bond. And I'm going to write MCPBA. And all you would have to do is draw this. So that's how we make an epoxide. Now, the stereochemistry is something to consider because that is what trips people up a lot. So now let's change this example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a methyl. All right. So how would we change our answer now? So one thing to keep in mind about epoxides the bond that we form to the oxygen, those two bonds, it must be the same stereochemistry. So that means they have to be both wedged, right? They could also be both dashed, but they cannot look like this. It's a very unstable ring, okay? So we cannot have that. So let's say I make these all wedged. Right. So if those are wedged, remember, we still had a methyl on this carbon that would turn that methyl dashed. All right. And so um, that's how we would have drawn that answer. You could have also had the other nantimer, so we could have drawn this. OK, so we could have had those two products. So definitely um, understand the stereochemistry. So let's do another example. Let's say they gave you this. With rings, it's a little bit easier. That was really badly drawn. So with rings, it's a little bit easier. With open chains, it's not as clear. So let's say they gave you this. And they asked you, what is the product when we do MCPBA? OK. So remember, we're going to have to act on the double bond. There's no carbocation shifts or anything like that. And so we're going to have to put and epoxide on that those carbons. Remember, we still have the methyl here. So we have to deal with the stereochemistry. 
Okay, so the way that it works, remember, let's say I, um, so in the, these examples, I showed it with stereochemistry on the ring itself, okay? Oftentimes, they actually may give it to you so that all the substituents except the ring itself have um, stereochem. So we would have to give the other three substituents to change the stereochemistry, okay? So actually, let's just do this. Draw the epoxide first. So let's compare the methyl and this chain right here, the ethyl chain. They're on the same side of the double bond. So whatever happens, they must be on the same side of the, of the double bond. So let's say I make them both wedged. Here's that methyl. And here's this other one. And so we have this. That was really badly drawn also. And so now we have that. Okay. Now, how about this one? Well, remember, it's opposite side of the double bond, so we have to give it the opposite stereochemistry. So if I made those wedged, this would now have to be dashed. Okay, and so that's an example of uh, how we can make epoxides, and again, we can have the other enantiomers. Okay, so always watch out for that one. And so let's say they gave, um, well, actually, no, let's just do another example. So they give you this MCPBA, right? Or actually, let's practice. Remembering RCO3H. Now let's say I'm going to give the um, epoxide itself stereochem, so I can give it a wedge plus the enantiomer, right? And I could also just do um, another one. So we did an example of having a trans double bond, right? Now they won't always give it to you in the trans conformation, but what they also may do is give it to you in the this confirmation, right? So they could do something like this. RCO3H. So we can have again this one and then plus the enantiomer, which would look like this. Okay, so now let's do an example, um, an actual example. So let's erase these. So let's see. Um, so this is going to be an example directly from your workshop, okay? And so how? Let's draw out another ring. This is the workshop quiz. Sorry, not the uh, actual like in class workshop. All right. So they asked you to figure out what the product of this was. So we have to do MCPBA, that's the first step. Okay, so remember, the stereochemistry of the epoxy itself has to be the same everywhere. So let's say I chose it to be wedged. That means the methyl there would have to be dashed. Okay. Now, what they gave is NaOCH3 over CH3OH. Now, what this is, remember, NaOCH3, Na gets a plus charge, cross it out. OCH3 gets a minus charge. Now, this is a base, and so this is going to bring me to the next thing. So we just covered epoxide formation. Now what we're going to have to do is epoxide openings, so we can open epoxides. And there's a little mnemonic to help you guys called BLAT. So it's going to be base, least, acid, tertiary. All right, what this means is if you have a base and you're opening an epoxide, you have to attack the least substituted carbon, okay? And what this is gonna do, it's gonna do an SN2 reaction and SN2 causes an inversion, okay? So we're gonna attack our least substituted carbon, which is right there. This is gonna kick out that water, not the water, sorry, the oxygen, it's going to break that bond. So we still had this stereochemistry remains the same. Let's get to a minus charge. But now we have a dash here, OCH3. And then this is why we have the CH3OH. This is going to take a proton. And now we're going to get 
this product. Okay, and so this is just one enantiomer, and that's because we made the epoxide all wedged. If we made it all dashed, we would get the other enantiomer. All right, so if we made it like this, all right, and so remember the base is going to attack the least substituted. Giving us something that looks like this. I'm going to skip ahead and protonate it. All right. And so we got two enantiomers here. So always watch out for that. All right. So we saw epoxide synthesis. And now that's how we break an epoxide in basic conditions. And we can use that mnemonic blat. So how about another example? So this is an example, again, from your workshop quiz that tripped a lot of people up. So they gave this epoxide. They gave it all wedged. And they reacted it with HBr. All right. And so um, how exactly are we going to do this um, do this reaction? So in the past, we just saw the base. Right. Now we're going to have to use an acid. And so in this case, remember, acid react it will attack the tertiary if we don't have a tertiary then we can react with any of the carbon so we get a mixture all right we get a 50 50 mixture so let's say i have a this secondary epoxide it can attack either carbon with equal affinity all right and so let's see this is gonna get protonated because remember the oxygen is somewhat basic breaks the br gives a charge. Now we have Br minus, and so this is again going to do an SN2, so it's going to cause an inversion. So we can pick either carbon, doesn't really matter. All right, and we're going to get OH and an inversion, so Br. All right, now here's the thing. All the products were given like this. The chain itself looked as if it was trans almost if we put a double bond here well if we put a double bond here it looks cis all right so that's the key to tell you that we have a bond rotation okay so what we have to do is now rotate a bond and we can pick any of them let's say i'm going to rotate this carbon right here around that bond all you're gonna have to do redraw it the same for the other half for one half the one that you want to keep the same and now we're going to flip the methyl up and the BR is going to be down now and opposite stereochemistry. You're going to get this. All right. And so that was one of the answers. The other one would have um, been if you just rotated the OH. Right. And so we're going to get something that looks like this. Which is just the same as this one if we just flip it. Okay. And so that's how they gave you your answer. So we had two answers in this case one where everything was wedged and if you flipped it we would have gotten the other one where everything is dashed okay and so watch out for doing something like that if you attack the other carbon in this case because everything is symmetrical so if i did this it would have given you the same thing there's no difference so you could have just picked the one to focus on okay and so that's how we go through the uh, epoxide openings now i do want to mention one other thing that i didn't mention there is another way to make an epoxide other than just using mcpba all right. So if you remember back to when we were doing um, exam one stuff, right, we could have something like this. Double bond. Right. And what I could do, is I could react it with um, Br2, H2O. And remember, this gives anti-stereochem. So let's, let's uh, say I put a methyl there just so we can visualize stereochemistry. So let's say I'm going to make the, remember we had this ring intermediate, the BR. Right? And so we're going to get this. Now, remember in this three-membered ring intermediate, we have to think about which one is going to get attacked. Right? Are we going to add the OH to the least substituted, sorry, the H2O to the least substituted or the more substituted? Well, it's going to attack the more substituted. This breaks, giving us this. And remember, it does create an inversion. And 
this stays the same, BR. Now that we have this, what we can do is we can add a, a base. So something like, let's say, NaOH. And it gets a plus, cross it out, hit OH minus. So let's move that away. So what's going to happen is it can deprotonate our H, sorry, our OH, giving us this. And then we have a good nucleophile. And this is an example of an intramolecular reaction, right? So this is going to attack that carbon and cause an inversion, giving us this. All right, now remember, we have to have the epoxide, the same stereochemistry for both bonds. If, let's say, for some reason, they started you off with the molecule like this, right? So if we use that halohydride formation thing, we would have gotten what we just did previously. But let's say they gave you something like this. Now we would have a problem because we would form the epoxide like this if you tried to do it. So we dashed here, but now we get the inversion, get wedged. It's extremely unstable, that won't form, all right? And so um, that's just something to watch out for. Usually there'll be another BR next to it that they could make you change instead, all right? And so in this case, we're not going to form an epoxide. So you're gonna get no reaction, okay? And so I hope that helped you guys in terms of how we form epoxides and also um, how we can break them. So remember, use that mnemonic that. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video when we cover one other reaction of alcohols that I haven't shown you guys yet in the videos. All right, see you then.